All right, guys. Uh, welcome to part two of hosting a dedicated Rust server. Um, so, if you haven't seen the first video, if you just kind of stumbled upon the second one, I really recommend you check out the first one because uh, li looking at them and watching them in order totally helps out, keeps you, you know, sane and keeps you on track with everybody else. So, um, you can go ahead and click the link in the description to the previous video, or click the annotation in the top left. But getting started on the second one, this is part two, and it's how to actually run and connect to your server through Rust. So if you followed all the steps in part one, you're going to have your legacy folder in your drive. And what you're going to go ahead and do is you've already clicked Rust Server once. Go ahead and double-click it again. And once it starts up, give it a window right here. Drag this bad boy out of the way. You're going to see it do a little bit of different things. It's actually going to locate things for you and not say missing everything it's actually going to find the maps and everything so this could take a while for somebody if you don't have a slow or you have a slow computer but if you have a quick computer it should go pretty well so server initialized means it's up and running a quick thing too is when you see steam server connected and steam sort or secure right here that actually means that your server is officially allowed to be on the steam server list um, of the rust dedicated servers if you've ever played rust it's in the big list which i'll show you right here um, your server is allowed to be on there. Now, it's not going to be on there most likely until you actually mess with it a little bit. And what you got to do is basically, I'm going to show you in another video how to do that. It's a bit tricky and it all it's all router and modem dependent. All right, and once you got Rust all updated and everything, go ahead and launch it. Now, this one you're actually going to be playing on. All right, so let's go ahead and bring it up a little bit. Don't necessarily need this, all of it right here. So connecting to it, it's pretty simple. Uh, when you play the game, you're going to see the list of all the servers and whatnot, and uh, you will not see yours, most likely. If you see it, awesome. But uh, the way to see yours eventually will be to click ping, and it'll be the lowest number because you're hosting it right from your computer, so your ping is just ridiculously low. So it'll be in one of the two if you actually see it but if you don't it's no big deal uh, what you're gonna do to connect to yours uh, you have to do it through the console by hitting F1 so keep it there um, sometimes it's a little bit hard to read so there we go I'll keep it there for you you actually gotta find out what your computer's IP address is and that's your servers IP address since you're running it straight off your machine so to do that go to start type CMD It'll bring up the command prompt, which is behind here. What you want to go ahead and do is type IP config. And once it brings up your IP and stuff, what you're going to see is a bunch of numbers, but you're going to look primarily for IPv4 address, which that's your computer's address. So mine, 192.168.1135. That's the beginning part of the server. So server's ID. That's the beginning part of what you actually got to type in for your server to connect to it. Now, again, to see this as well, over here in the Rust server, See that port number? 28015. That's Rust's designated port number. So what you do there, that's what you type in afterwards. So what you're going to want to type in to connect to it is type net.connect space 192.168.1.135 and then colon, then the port number, 28015. So it should look like that. Yours may differ from the 135 part because that's my machine's chosen last three digits of the IP address. So when you do that, you just hit enter. Hit F1, make console go away, and you'll see that it's actually loading your server. So bam. Once this officially loads, you can see on here, server Josh is down connected. Let me run that up here. Bang. So. I connected, now we're waiting because it's the first time loading up. And here we are. We are in our server that we made. Completely vanilla, nothing going on, no mods, nothing. Yeah. So, that's it. You're in your own server. Nobody can get in here unless you let them. Now, doing this again, it would be pretty boring if you don't let anybody in your server. Just being alone in an open world would kind of suck. So, that's where we're going to be getting to the next part of installing the modifications to make the server more fun. I'll be going ahead and showing you in the next video, video number three, 
how to install the server and the mods itself. So uh, go ahead and click the up top left video if you want to see the first part again. Uh, go ahead and click the top right video if you want to see the third video, third part to it. Go ahead and click the subscribe button if you haven't because, you know, subscribing is awesome. You get to see more things that I pump out. Um, and in the description, you'll see links to, you know, previous files if you needed to download them. And you can get those files. So, yeah, thanks again for watching and go ahead and tune in next time.